Now, what I'm talking about in this Thucydides quote um, is essentially that people who are always trying to please and concede and be nice to everyone, which is a leadership style that I find way too prevalent nowadays, in the end, they don't get the respect uh, that a leader needs. And sooner or later, you need to draw upon that respect to, to make a hard decision and get people to follow you. And in the book, I talk about the director, John Ford, in Hollywood, who we're in Hollywood right now. We're probably near where he used to live. John Ford was a great, great director of American Westerns. And he was a man who saw that directing a film with a hundred people is a very difficult thing to do. And if you were afraid of making the hard decisions and being tough with people, everyone would run all over you. So he, he found that the higher the standard that he set for, for what people should do, the more they respected him. And the more respect he had, the more leeway he had to sometimes do tough things. But at the same time, he emanated a genuine fairness and respect for other people. And this is a style that I think is extremely appropriate uh, to the world we live in. To be a leader in 21st century America or Canada or wherever in the world is a really, really difficult task. It's almost impossible. It's never been harder in the history of mankind to be a leader. And what I mean by that is, on the one hand, we live in extremely democratic times in which the old way of being authoritarian and trying to control people and imposing your will on them as a leader is a style that is, won't work. You'll create resentment. People will hate you. They might give in to you today or tomorrow, but two weeks from now, they'll cheer at your downfall or they'll sabotage you in some way. On the other hand, the other direction of being all nice, and cooperative and acting like everybody's equal and tabling everybody up for an idea when you have an important decision to do and all, doing it all in a democratic fashion is a recipe for disaster because it, it's what we call groupthink. Group it can often be the most irrational decision maker uh, of any because people have all their political desires and goals and when you put that all together in a group, they're not able to make the proper important decision. And so being too soft and too hard, won't, neither style is effective nowadays. And it's, but it is precisely what the temptation that a leader will have. And so what you must do is you must realize that you need a middle path in between the two. You are not going to be authoritarian. You are not going to try and control and micromanage everybody beneath you. You're going to give people some leeway, give them what I would call a mission statement and allow them to make decisions on their own so they feel actively involved in the group. On the other hand, you are the leader. You are making decisions. You are the one that has the vision for where the company or the business needs to go. When, when push comes to shove, you will make the hard decision. You will fire somebody. You will confront this person. And I maintain that that level of of toughness that you bring into the generally soft approach is what will give you respect as a leader because people always, we have a primitive uh, relationship to people in power and a person that emanates authority is somebody that we can respect, but an authority that's fair, that's just, and that allows for people uh, to, be, to be creative from within this working environment. If he's a very interesting leader, he exemplifies this leadership quality that I'm talking about, but he made, he's made mistakes. Um, and it's interesting to watch, because he's not perfect, he's interesting to watch how he learns and how he, he won't repeat the same mistakes. So to me, the difference between a good leader and a bad leader is one who learns on the job from his or her mistakes and is willing to adapt and to change. For instance, he was too trusting and naive when he first got on the scene and he hired a bunch of people to be artists on his label, G-Unit. And it was a disaster. These people were not motivated. They were waiting for him to, do, to, to be the star that would bring them all up. And he realized, no, I'm never going to do that again. I'm not going to hire friends. I'm not going to bring people I like onto my label. 
if they if, if I bring somebody onto the G Unit label, they're like an entrepreneur. They have to stand for themselves. He gives people a generally a lot of leeway, but all heading towards a goal. They all are aware of the brand. They're all aware of where he wants to take the company, but they're engaged in it. So he he, he has the style where he doesn't like to micromanage people, but he sets a really high standard that you have to meet. In other words, you have to work 60, 70 hours a week like he does. You have to be creative. You have to come up with very interesting ideas. Fine, you'll be rewarded for that. But if you're not, if you're a slacker or you're, or you're not on the team, he won't think twice about getting rid of you. 